So you've seen those overlays and alerts that appear on people's streams, as well as the bots that go into their chat saying, hey, join my Discord, and then drop a link, and it seems to be on a timer, as well as tip pages and other cool special features that are not built in specifically into Twitch. And you're wondering, how do they do it? In today's video, I'll be explaining the two options most people use, as well as which option I think you should use. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyric. I'm your one-stop shop for Twitch tips, tricks, and training. Today, we are here with episode two of Beginner's Guide to Streaming. Now, the first episode, I taught you how to set up OBS. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you the difference between Streamlabs and Stream Elements, as well as which one I think you should use and how to set it up. This is vital to any stream and will probably be a two-parter because there's one section of this that I want to have its own video for. Be sure to click subscribe to the channel below to make sure that you are up to date for when that video comes out. I upload two videos a week, as well as hit that like button if you found this video to be helpful. If you have any questions about anything at all, drop by my Twitch channel, ask me while I'm live. I'm live every Tuesday and Thursday night, link in the description below. So the main two options that people use for this are Streamlabs and Stream Elements. There are other things like Nightbot, but I'm not really gonna get into those since I think these are newer and a little bit better. But what are they exactly? Well, they're websites that help you manage your alerts, overlays, chatbots, timers, mod settings, loyalty points, merch stores, tipping pages, you name it, any special feature, these things are what will have it. Now of the two options, you're probably wondering which one should you choose? Well, I'm gonna be explaining the main attraction to each one. Streamlabs on one hand, is a lot easier to use in many people's opinions. However, there are not as many features as well as I've always just run into some weird bug that's just been really awful and weird like every single time I've tried to use it. That's just a personal experience. I don't know if you guys will have the same problem or not. <laughs> I don't know. However, Stream Elements is more complicated, but because of that, there are more features and more things that you can do and you can further customize your stream to be however you want. Even though Stream Elements is a little bit harder to learn, I recommend it because it gives you more options to make your stream your own. Plus, I will be here to help you with any of the hard stuff. I will be showing you guys through Stream Elements and what exactly everything is and giving you a full rundown of the website. If you want to check out Streamlabs though, you're more than welcome to. No, it is very, very similar, um, different UI and it looks different, but it's essentially the same functionality, just easier to use, less features to use. Okay, so this is the main page for Stream Elements. Once you've logged in, this is your dashboard where you can see any new followers, new subscribers, uh, that you've gotten within the past month. On the side over here, you have a navigation bar that allows you to navigate through the site. And I'm gonna go through each thing in order. So like I said, this is the dashboard. Go here, this is the activity feed. You can see all the different recent events that have happened uh, during your session of your stream. Right now I'm not live, so this is going to be blank. If you're streaming and you got a new follow, it would pop up here. This page is for OBS Live, which is a Stream Elements incorporated version of OBS. You don't need to have it for Stream Elements, but uh, it's kind of useful because you can have your chat and activity feed built straight into OBS. If you want to download it and try it out, see if you like it better than OBS, it's free, give it a shot. Next up, we have the Themes Gallery. I will be honest, I don't use this. Um, it can be good for getting an initial setup, but I would recommend trying to make your own. That's something unique that is only on your channel. So it has been kind of slow in Chrome. I'm switching over to Firefox. I find it works a little bit better and a little bit more consistent. Though Chrome is fine most of the time. This is the themes page. Uh, you can choose different themes. And if you go inside of it, you'll be able to see like intermission screens, starting soon screens. Like I said, it's really good for just a basic setup until you can create your own that you like. This is the overlays page where you can set up your alerts if you want your chat on the screen, timers, uh, donation bars, follower goals, etc. This is going to be part two where I'm going to do a full in-depth on everything for this is. Essentially though, this is going to be most of your bread and butter for stream elements, but that'll be the next video which should be out in the next week or so. Now, partnerships, you can ignore. If you're a smaller streamer, it probably doesn't apply to you. It doesn't even apply to me. Tipping settings. Here is where you can set your tipping page, the different settings for it, 
etc. There's tipping settings here. You can choose your payment options like PayPal or card, as well as page settings, design, uh, setting up your tip panel for underneath your stream, as well as moderation settings for when you receive tips. So this is your revenue history page. Here you can see all the tips that you have gotten through your tipping page that you set up on the previous tab up here. This is just for your information. You can also see like your top cheers, income report, merch history for anybody who might've bought merch. Next up we have SE pay, just another way you can receive tips. This only really applies to you if you set up SE pay or a credit card through your tipping page settings. If you didn't and you're just doing PayPal, don't worry about it. This page doesn't really apply to you. Now, one thing that this actually has over Streamlabs is this has a free merch website page that it automatically will set up for you. Right now, these are the options that are available for you to customize and create and sell to your viewers if they like them and want to support you as well as rock some merch with your branding on it. Next up, we have the loyalty settings. Now, if you're affiliate, you've probably unlocked channel points by that time, which is essentially the same thing. You get points for just sitting in somebody's stream. With this, you can uh, you get a little bit more customizability options. There's a separate store page outside of Twitch through stream elements that you have to spend all your points on as well as leaderboards and stuff. So there are more features than Twitch's channel point program. However, I find that the channel point system, it's just, it's built into the UI and it's a lot easier on viewers to use in my opinion. But honestly, it's up to you and whatever you want for your content. This is the page where you can set up all the different things like bonuses you get for following or subbing as well as multipliers for how many extra points you get if you're subbed etc all that different kind of stuff here we have a leaderboard for who has the most points a stream store which you can set up to allow people to spend their loyalty points on cool things such as hydrating with water or choosing your loadout in a match whatever you set up your imagination is the limit you can even set up contests and giveaways using points which are honestly really really cool i used to do a lot of these back in the day before twitch had uh, implemented their own system for it Next up, we have Chatbot, which is the other feature I think is really, really great about stream elements. The first was overlays, second's Chatbot. There's different modules that you can do, such as chat alerts, chat games, Twitter. At the moment, I'm not really using any, but these are all really cool. If anything sounds here like it'd be fun for you or your viewers, go ahead and turn it on, try it out, see how they like it. If you can expand and despand all of these, change their settings, get a better idea for how they work. Next up, we have user management, which is actually under the chat commands page. Here you can set different roles for different users. You can do this straight through Twitch if you want, but if you wanna just manage everything through the site, it allows you to. So here you can set VIPs, mods. If you click the tab at the top, you can see a list of all the default commands that are already built into stream elements for your stream to use. And you can turn them all either on or off as well as change the level of who can use them and who can't. So whether it's sub only or mod only or everybody can use them. As well as there are chat commands that are custom that you can set for yourself. So if somebody types a command in the chat, it displays whatever message that you set. So for example, if somebody types exclamation point info in my chat, it gives them info about the charity that I'm currently doing. In case you haven't heard, a little side plug. November 14th, I will be doing up to 36 hours in a single stream for charity. It's going to be really, really dope. We'll have giveaways, etc. You can find out more info if you just come and check out my Twitch channel. Once again, link in the description below. And the last tab on this page is variables that you can use in your custom commands. So if you use dollar sign user, it'll display whatever the user who used the chat command is. And there's a whole list of these and you can go in, play with them, read what they do. Next up, we have spam filters. And this is where you can prevent spam in your chat as best as possible. So prevent all caps messages if you want, link protection, you can set it so that way only subs can send links, or you can make it so only mods can send links. It's really up to you and how you wanna do it. There's email protection, paragraph protection, symbol protection, and certain banned words if you wanna make sure that it catches any hate speech or just super filthy language that you wanna go ahead and get out right then and there. And words is where you would do that. So here we have timers, and this is where you can set messages to go off at certain time intervals, as well as wait for a certain amount of messages to be sent in your chat before it resends it again. For example, I have this panels one that reminds people that, hey, I have panels below on my stream. 
go check them out. You can find my YouTube, Discord, you can donate, you can see information about the charity, etc. And it's set to go off every 20 minutes when I'm live, every 30 minutes when I'm not live, and it'll wait for five messages to go off in chat before it'll send it again. Media request, which you can use for people to or song request songs. Uh, wouldn't recommend this right now with the whole DMCA thing going on, but if you want to risk it, there you go. You have a profile page for your stream elements main profile. Once again, this probably won't really be used. If you want to set it up, it takes like two minutes. So why not, right? And last but not least, you have a social media page, which can do stuff like tweet when you go live, notify you uh, at YouTube events, which is coming soon. Facebook stuff is coming soon. Discord and Instagram is all coming soon. They're always doing more stuff and developing more features for stream elements. So there's always some stuff that you kind of get to see a teaser of stuff coming soon that doesn't quite work yet. But for now, you can set it up so that way it tweets every time you go live. Now, personally, I would recommend having a more personalized tweet every time you go live, as well as attach some sort of picture or media to go with those live tweets. But if you want the easy route, this is the best option for it. And that is the rundown for stream elements. That's every single page, all the options that you get from it. I would recommend checking it out at streamelements.com. I'll have a link in the description below to it. Next video in the series will be part two for stream elements, which is how to set up overlays, a more in-depth guide for what they are, how they work, how you can set them up. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned a lot in this video, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps me out and helps you to push the video to other people, as well as hit subscribe and the bell icon. I upload two videos a week all geared towards helping you grow your Twitch channel to be the best it can be. And if you have any questions about any of this, come to my Twitch channel. I'm live every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. There we play a lot of games, chat, and I answer any questions that you guys throw my way. And if I don't know the answer, we find it out together. This is your Twitch trainer signing off. I hope you have an amazing week, guys, and I will see you on Friday. Peace. Why don't you have any boots? Sometimes I forget, okay? <laughs> you forget boots and you run like half a mile an hour. Cause I'm a big boy. I look like I'm supposed to run half a mile an hour. Okay? I feel like you should, I guess you should run actually.